All right, hi there guys, it's Phil here. Just thought I'd do a little video on my pedal board setup at the moment and just run you through the sounds that I've got for kind of the basic weekend gigs that I've got with various different bands and stuff. Um, I'm using the G2, you can see down here. Apologies for the hole in my shoe. You can see the G2, I'm using that to switch everything on the board. I'm sure lots of you are familiar with that. Um, sporting a lot of uh, usual suspects on the board, the timeline, which is kind of industry standard now, and the eventide space, which gives cool ambient style reverbs. And I've actually stripped it back a little bit, actually, so I've got just what I need. So I've got the uh, Ego Compressor by Wampler, uh, which is cool. The Euphoria, which is an awesome overdrive. I'll show you that in a sec, which is really great. I love that pedal. Uh, the JHS Angry Charlie version 2, which, um, in my personal opinion, is the best incarnation of that particular circuit that they've done. I think it sounds really, really good. Uh, and then we've got the JHS Double Barrel, which has got the picture of the shotgun on it. And I'm using the open side of that. And I'm using that pedal really as a, as a boost pedal. So I'm using that to hit the front end of both the Euphoria and the Angry Charlie if I want it just for a little bit of extra juice if uh, if I need it on a gig uh, if I feel a bit like I've not got a handle on the guitar and I need a little bit of uh, extra talent juice to help me get through a solo or something I can just bring that in uh, and then down here this silver one down here is a noise gate um, by ISP Technologies this one will be familiar to loads of you I'm sure and they do one with an effects loop in it, but this is just the standard one, version two. And I just use that just um, after the overdrives, just to get rid of some of that hum. I know lots of guys, they like that hum. It feels authentic and all that kind of thing. Um, and I'm totally with you on that, but often I'll work with an MD who doesn't want all of that buzzing in his ears. So it's just nice to have that and get rid of it. And it stops uh, well-intentioned sound engineers from putting... Uh, a noise gate on my sound and cutting off my uh, delay tails and things like that, which uh, can be a little bit of a pain. So that comes after the overdrives, but of course before the modulation effects. Um, and then before everything, got the volume pedal. It's a bit of an old one, this needs replacing really. It's a bit crackly as you'll hear in a sec. And then the TU3 tuner. And then this is a new addition, this drop pedal. Uh, which I haven't got the right power for yet, so I haven't been able to play around with that, but that's where it will sit when I've got it all wired in. And just sometimes on a gig you get a tune that's um, where the guitarists have tuned the guitar to E-flat tuning, and uh, <coughs> uh, the singer wants to be able to sing it in the original key, but you can't really tune the whole guitar before that song, or it's it's too you know it's not quick enough keeping the dance floor going changing guitars that kind of thing so this pedal is going to be a real lifesaver i can play uh, in the original key without having to worry about tuning or reworking out parts that need open strings and stuff like that so that's just a big time saver so i can't show you that right now but that will be um will be in there as well so uh, why don't i show you some sounds well, in fact i'll go through the order first so down here, this is where all the effects go in. So uh, if, I can if I've got all the loops right, if I can remember them. First one is the compressor. Then in loop number two, we get the double barrel, which is this one. Uh, I think in loop number three, next there, I've got the euphoria, which comes next. And then just because of space, no other reason, in loop six is the angry Charlie. And then I think in loop eight, I've got the noise gate in loop number eight before the wet effects. So in loop nine, I've got the delay and I've got the delay going into loop. Uh, uh, sorry, I've got the delay first and then the reverb. So the, the delay, if I've got both on, the delay goes into the reverb rather than re-delaying, rather than delaying and repeating the reverb sound. I just want the repeats to go into the reverb. So sometimes if I've got both of those on, it makes the reverb obviously wash out more, which is great for ethereal kind of sounds. Um, uh, or if I don't want that and I just want the reverb to have a, s a shorter tail, I'll have a patch that um, just doesn't have uh, the delay in there as well. 
Cool. So that's basically how all the sounds work. And I've got this set up for my gig this weekend, which is just uh, a function gig, playing all the kind of standard function tunes. So this is really kind of covering a whole bunch of styles from pop and funk to classic rock and um, 80s hair metal. So I've got to cover all cover all the bases, really. So um, let's have a look at the clean sound. I'm using the Victory V40 Deluxe as the amp, and I'm running that clean. I'll show you. Uh, I'll get a picture of that up on the screen so you guys can see how I've got that set. And for this, I've got this going into the Torpedo Live, which I've been using more and more regularly instead of miking the cab. And I'm using uh, impulse responses by Celestian themselves. They use some really, really nice ones, which I think sound um, really true to uh, the actual Victory cab that I've got. I think it sounds sounds really close. It's the truest uh, sort of representation of what I think my rig sounds like when I'm playing through the cab normally. Um, so that's good. So I know the front of house guy is getting what what I think he should be getting, uh, rather than it sounding drastically different, which often it can with these sorts of things. Okay, that's enough talking. So <coughs> let's get to the playing. So uh, clean sound, I'll show you that first. Um, so this is the uh, amp uh, with no effects. So just bypassing all of the effects. So kind of really plain, plain clean tone there. Uh, apologies for the uh, slightly duff notes. I managed to uh, slice my finger, so I'm playing with a with a plaster. That's my excuse for sounding rubbish. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, now what I like to do is I like to run the overdrive pedals uh, with the output, kind of pushing the front end of the amp quite hard, and that just makes the overdrives uh, sound more akin to an overdrive channel just the way it hits the front end stops the overdrive from sometimes if you're running the output really low the amp can suddenly sound like really thin and not very um not very full which is not really what we're hoping for um, but what that means is that often the overdrives are, are way too loud in com comparison to the clean tones so <coughs> i'm using the compressor just to beef up the clean sound really uh, and also um, kind of uh, mimic help the amp sort of mimic um, uh, it being slightly on a breakup stage as well. So it's just got a little bit more hair in the top, a little bit more, more character. So that sounds like this. you can hear with the compressor on it's just got uh, a little bit more weight it's got a little bit um a little bit of a more uh, pleasing pleasing sound sounds less boring a bit more a uh, bit more interesting now i can get the amp to sound like that um just by pushing the 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 gain stage on it and uh, that sounds really great but um as i'll show you in a second i've got some patches that are louder for volume boosts for solo sections and if i've got the amp running at breakup when i uh, increase the output for more volume, uh, there's no more headroom left and the amp just becomes more distorted and I don't actually get more volume. So the compressor helps kind of uh, mimic as though the amp is on that breakup stage, which the Victory amp does really, really well. Um, but I've got it set up for a, a, a jack-of-all-trade situation at the moment. All right, next patch is the Euphoria, which sounds like this. <laughs> So you can hear it's got a great, uh, great, really nice um, open overdrive sound. 
Sounds really sweet. Sounds like a really nice amp cranked, which is really cool. Um, sounds really great. Got it in the smooth setting. Uh, I just really like that setting. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. And the cool thing with that pedal is the bass control. If you increase the bass on it, it kind of starts to uh, sort of feel and sound more akin to like a fuzz pedal. So it's a really versatile overdrive, uh, but this is where I've got it set at the moment. Now the next patch on channel three, um, so I've got like clean, crunch, and then I've kind of got like a mild overdrive sound where I'm boosting the front end of the euphoria uh, with the double barrel. So um, it's just giving a little bit more juice and that extra gain thickens the sound a little bit. So it gives a little bit more mid range punch uh, and it just gives me a little bit more uh, saturation. So if I want to get out um, some legato lines or something like that, um, I've got a little bit of extra uh, talent booster to help me get through uh, something that's a little bit more technical. So uh, number three sounds like this. I'll, I'll go between the two. So that's what that sounds like. Now you'll notice when um, I turned on the patch three, uh, so there's patch two, patch two, so loop number three that's got the euphoria in it is on. When I turn on patch three, you see number two turns on, that's the double barrel, but also I've got the noise gate in the in the loop as well because that extra gain just gets a bit of hum. So, and my room's quite noisy as well, so if I turn that off, you can hear there's that extra hiss. There's nothing wrong with that extra hiss, that's kind of fine. Uh, but sometimes you're working with a with a band or an MD where they want you to kind of be ready with the sound before the show starts and they they don't want all that hiss don't want all that hiss on so it just cleans everything up a bit and now it's nice and quiet so it's uh, gone there I don't do it on this one and you can barely hear the hiss if I was a bit closer to the computer the uh, wiring goes a bit haywire and you'd be able to hear it then Anyway, so number three, and then number four is that sound, but with the Strymon delay in number nine comes on. So you see that comes in there. Now you'll see here on, uh, let's turn that off, got this post gain control. Those of you who aren't familiar with that, what this post gain control does, it has this kind of clever internal matrix thing so that your delay can spill over onto another preset if that's turned on. So let's say I finish a solo and the delay trail goes off. I can go back to my rhythm sound and a bit like how you'd cut it in a studio, the delay keeps going, but my new notes aren't triggering the delay. So it just makes the tail, um, the transition between sounds uh, much smoother and sound much more um, polished, you know, which is great, especially if you're doing like a live recording or something like that. That works really well. Now the cool thing as well is you can actually turn up the post game the volume of that patch essentially from each one so I could go from this one and turn up the volume which is what I've done so you can see the lights there have gone brighter and there's more of them as well as you go up so this patch is a little bit louder for a lead and also if you wanted to you can use pre-gain as well which is boosting the input stage so it's essentially like making your pickups of your guitar a little bit hotter um, I haven't really used that feature that much um, but you can do that as well. I suppose you could use that instead of an overdrive, which is quite effective. Um, so that's that sound. So hopefully you'll hear a bit of a volume jump when I switch between the two. <laughs> So you can hear there as I changed, uh, changed patch, you could hear the delay trails keep going. So that's a really neat feature. And then in number five, I am using 
um, the Angry Charlie in there, the Angry Charlie, and I've got the noise game with that as well, and that sounds like this. <laughs> So that's the that's the Angry Charlie, full on like eighties rock sort of sound. And then um, number six is the Angry Charlie with the delay, um, and uh, with the output boosted for a solo. <laughs> So you can do all of that, and um, yeah, you can hear even when I turn off the uh, when I bypass the whole thing, um, you can still hear the trails go, which is cool. Now these yellow lights, I've got these set for stomp box mode, which is where essentially you can assign any pedal to any of these, and it can be as if you were doing it old school and just turning them on and off manually, which is uh, really cool. So what I've done is on number seven here at the end of my bottom row. Um, I've got the uh, double barrel overdrive on there. So let's say I just wanted to bring in um, a little bit of overdrive uh, on my rhythm sound, or sorry, not that, on my kind of main high gain, high gain rhythm sound, um, or on the lead. I just wanted a little bit of an extra push. I probably don't need it, but I might just feel like I need that safety net of a little bit extra juice. So I can just bring in, and you can hear there's all of that extra extra buzz so I could just bring that in or if I was on this patch I could just bring in that extra thing or if I was on the clean channel and I just wanted to bring that in I could do that as well uh, but really it's just more um, really for this sound if I want to just like boost the front end and have a super saturated high gain sound then I can do that um, now at the top here number 14 I've got this set for tuner out just to go to the tuner cuts everything completely dead um, so in fact one thing I hadn't realized was if I turn that on and if I hold that there we go let's set the output now the cool thing about this tuner thing is if I turn that on it will before it would cut everything off without this on so if I turn that back off again it means if I've got loads of reverb and delay going mental I can just have that as a safety thing and it'll just cut the amp silent and then I can like reset the pedal if it's having a bit of a nightmare. Um, but on here, number 13 here, this is the reverb pedal, number 10, which is at the end of the chain. And number 12, that's bringing in my delay there. So let's say I was on this clean sound and I just wanted to play. I was playing something and I wanted to just bring in a little bit of ambient reverb for, for whatever reason. Um, then I could just do that. So I could play some chords. So I could just bring that in and I could bring in a little bit of delay as well or I could do that on this crunch sound as well if I decided I just wanted to roll off the volume control and then add a little bit of ambience to it I can do that um, which is pretty great so I could be on number two and I could just like layer up different things and then say I wanted to go crazy and like boost the front end of that as well I can turn them all off in stomp box mode and turn them off individually now the really cool thing about this is I've got them all on I've laid up these kind of extra auxiliary effects that I've just brought into the patch. Let's say I want all of those to disappear immediately. I just hit my original preset and they all turn off, which is absolutely diamond. I absolutely love that feature. And then the only other patch that I've got set up at the moment, which I use for um, some kind of open sections, particularly like with uh, pop tracks that have got lots of... Um, know lots of synths and sort of spacious synth sounds not really any guitar 
on here I've got the compressor and the uh, clean sounds and you can do some like ambient swells on chords and mimic some synth pad stuff. So that would sound a bit, a bit like this. So you can do all that kind of thing. Now you could hear that crackle, that's um, coming from this volume pedal because it's a bit knackered and the pot's a bit bit dirty on it. So I need to get that uh, get that fixed, uh, really. So on a recording, that's no good. Um, but live, it's fine. No one can no one can hear it. So um, there you go. And then uh, yeah, I'd use the uh, I'd use the drop pedal there for songs that just need to be in E flat tuning, like Mr. Brightside needs to be in E flat tuning. Um, most bands play it in D, but uh, some singers want it in the original key, which is fair enough. Um, or things like um, Beat It by Michael Jackson, that always uh, kind of throws everyone out as well, because the main riff is, of course, in E-flat standard tuning, so it uh, doesn't, doesn't work in regular tuning or in drop D. Fingering is, is mental, so that'll be a good lifesaver. So there you go. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs>